Free Golden Birds for War Thunder. Inspect the app in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome to some more War Thunder. Yes, now what aircraft are we flying today, you might ask? Well, there's a few key giveaways that only the experts will spot. Namely, this weird leathery thing here, whatever it is. Secondly, there are some strange alien hieroglyphs engraved onto the dials. Then thirdly, the strange lever next to our flight stick that's either a trigger or a poorly placed parking brake. And finally, the wings that are sat further back than a British field marshal at the Battle of the Somme. They're miles away from the combat, giving us vague direction. Yes, now all of this information leads me to deduce we are in fact flying a Russian MiG-17 jet fighter. I bet you didn't see that one coming, unless you happen to glance at the thumbnail of this video, which features a cacking great picture of one. Anyway, so basically, there are two key things you need to know about this aircraft. One, it goes at a fair old lick. It really is incredibly fast. In fact, it's a gnat's ass short of being supersonic. Although, to be fair, if you stick it into a very sharp and perilous dive, you will break the sound barrier. And possibly one or two of your wings moving on, the second thing you've really got to know about the MiG is that, well, it's got more cannons than Napoleon's right flank. It's covered in them. And, uh, well, much like a Napoleonic era field gun, the MiG's cannons are big, heavy, and are brilliant at maiming things, which I think is smashing. Quite literally, yes. Now down there playing a game of spot the submarine is a Hawker Hunter, the best aircraft in the game. Nay, the best aircraft ever, I tell you. And that's a fact, because I said so. It's fast, it's manu- well, it's not manoeuvrable, uh, but I mean it's British, and well, the bastard hasn't even seen us coming, and I still don't fancy our chances. Here we go, fire the guns. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Right. Um, well, uh, call it my superb pilot's intuition if you will, but I believe we might have clipped him there, you know? Look, there is little bits going up into orbit. Yeah, we definitely killed him. Uh, now, hopefully, it goes without saying that that there was a faulty model of Hawker Hunter. Obviously, it wasn't working properly. I mean, usually, you would die just by flying that close to a Hunter's fuselage. You would die horribly. They're just that powerful. So, case closed, his aircraft was defective. Let's all just blame the MOD for cocking up somewhere along the line as per usual and move on and engage this Sabre here. And I think he's cottoned on to our presence. Ah, yes, he's turning. Right, now, roughly how far ahead do you have to lead these cannons, I wonder? Three meters? Three weeks? Who knows? Fire? Yes, you see, there you go. You have to aim and fire a salvo roughly 400 miles towards where you think your target is flying. And then, obviously, pray to Uncle Joseph and he'll do the rest. Yes, yes, jolly good. Yes. Good. What in the name of... Satan's love spuds is that? Good God! There's some poor, hapless sap flying a de Havilland vampire, and he's climbing after us! Well, yeah. Uh, we best skedaddle, viewers, because we're in trouble now. For those of you who aren't informed, the de Havilland vampire is a vintage jet from 1943 that's so good in War Thunder, it fights aircraft throughout time! Yes, it's really very, very dangerous. Um, you know, it fights aircraft like the MiG-17 from the 50s, because otherwise it wouldn't be fair. And we British are a sporting people, and we don't mind our aircraft fighting MiG-17s. No, sir, nothing wrong with that. And, uh, well, we're currently as high as a Dutch astronaut, and so we better dive down and kill it before it wipes out our entire team in one fell swoop. Catching it... Uh, might not be too difficult, as we are going very fast, as the MiG-17 is basically a Soviet-era armchair welded onto a tube that's powered by what is basically a British 6,000-pound thrust turbojet engine. Not only that, but I've added 2,000 pounds of power! With the paint job, yes. I feel the author could have done better with some racing stripes and a bit less camouflage. But anyway, there's an F2H there stalling and it's our duty to make sure he doesn't recover. Here we go, fire. Oh, bloody hell, he blew up. Yes, spectacular. Lit up the mountains for miles around. 
Yes. Right, let's zoom back up into a climb and observe things from an altitude. This is what Zeppelins used to do, you know. Here we go. Let's roll it over. And unlike Zeppelins, we've got nothing to fear from Sopwith Camels. No, sir. Not today. Now, if you feast your eyes on the coastline below, you'll see our advanced scout party uh, dogfighting the enemy. And not very well. So it's time to initiate a dive I like to call the deadly oh dangerous and death dive of death. Yes. Basically, what you do is you point your aircraft at the ground, pick a target, and hope for the best. Uh, brace yourselves, everybody. Here we go. Fire. No, we hit him. We bloody hit him. Where's a referee when you need one, for God's sake? Let's watch that in an instant replay. Well, there you have it. It turns out the vampire is so good, it's impervious to 23 and 37 millimeter caliber shells. It is British after all, and crafted out of hardened crumpets. Now, earlier I mentioned that the MiG-17 uses what is essentially a jumped up British jet engine. And so I think it's time for a good old Squire history lesson. Yes. Can you hear me at the back? Good, good. Good, thank you. Now, the date was 1946, and the less said about the Russian jet development program, the better. At the war's conclusion, all the Ruskies really had to go on, as far as jet engines are concerned, were the old boilers that BMW had laying around on their factory floors. And let me tell you that in 1945, BMW didn't have enough rare metal to forge a pot to piss in, nor a window frame to throw it out of, let alone enough to expand their new fashionable line of jet engines. And so, it was put to Stalin, why couldn't they just buy some British engines instead? After all, Britain was leading the world in such matters. And uh, well, since the British economy after the war was worth about two shillings and sixpence, it was a plausible idea. Now Stalin understandably said, what kind of fool would sell us their secrets? Well, as it turns out, us British were just the right fools for the job. Yes, sir. So we gleefully handed over 40 of the best engines ever to be invented. But in a classic British game-winning maneuver, we asked them politely to please, please, please not put them in anything military-based. That's right, these latest generation jet engines are for civilian use only. I suppose that means washing machines and hair dryers and that sort of thing. I think you'll agree when I say the British had the last laugh there. Check and mate. Well, not exactly, no. As it turns out, the very first thing the Russians did when they got home with their new engines was to stick them in every military airframe they had available, thus producing a new wave of Russian aircraft, including the MiG-15 and MiG-17 and so on. But what's worse is, the bastards never paid for them. I mean, honestly. And we're back in the combat, and we're chasing a British meteor. And, uh, well, I can't tell you which variant it is, because they're all so similar. And, oh, here we go. We've got him here. We've got him here. And, aha! Oh, no, he's... He slipped past us. Oh, that was embarrassing. Uh, well, you know, they turn very quickly. He turned in a lethal fashion, like a sausage past its use-by date. He almost bloody hit us, actually. Yes, Roadhog. Yeah, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, up ahead, we have an F-80 shooting star flying towards our base. Now, either he's lost, or he's going to shoot up our ME-262. Now, I can bet which one it is. I'm thinking it might be the latter. Yeah, it looks like it is. Uh, he's turned off now, right now. It's our chance to pick him off from a distance. Yes, here's where the old commando sniper training comes in handy. Wish I'd had some. Right, here we go. Here we go now. Fire! Oh, that's missed quite a bit. Right, fire again. Oh, that's missed even more. Right, up, up, up! Oh, God. Well done, Squire. You've really cocked this one up. He's chasing us. Let's make like Sputnik and blast ourselves into the stratosphere. Yes, here we go. My God, no wonder they call it the shooting star. It's burning up my retinas with its tracer. Bloody hell. Right, well, hopefully he's stalling now, and we can turn it over and finish him off. Yeah, we'll get him here. Oh, no, no, never mind. Uh, naturally, the strong Russian anti-capitalist guns uh, got to him before we did which was the strategy all along. 
Yes, I deliberately and tactically missed all of those shots on the F-80, deliberately, you understand, to tactically lure him into a false sense of security. At which point, he assumed I was a few cards short of a complete deck and followed me vertically, which resulted in his scattering over a very picturesque part of Spain. Now, you might or might not choose to believe my version of events, but I'm sticking to it. Now, since I'm such a wonderful team player, I've baited this F2H Banshee into some kind of climb, all deliberately, you understand, so that our team can really have a really good go at him. Yeah, look at him now, getting shot at a bit. Well, uh, hopefully he'll die. Nope, not quite, okay, we better keep turning, or this might turn nasty. Now, as I understand it, the F2H Banshee, like most American vehicles, wasn't designed with cornering and turning in mind, and as such, has all the turning grace of a concrete pillbox, relying mostly on continental shift. Whereas the MiG-17 is basically a fat MiG-15 that doesn't quite turn as well, but boy does it go downhill quickly. Yes. Oh, tally-ho, tally-ho, there's the vampire from earlier. He's come back for round two, has he? Right, put up your jukes, buster. Here we go, here we go. Uh, yeah. How in the name of Greek buggery are you meant to hit an aircraft that maneuvers like a politician on roller skates? Ten pounds and a free packet of half-eaten Jaffa cakes to whomever shoots that man out of the sky. Whoops, nearly had another murder on my conscience. Anyway, enough murder talk. Let's kill this bastard. Yes. Now he's using a tried and tested squire tactic of flying in a dead straight line and not moving. Yes, to confuse the enemy. I use it a lot. I mean, yes, granted, it's never worked, but it's still my move and he stole it, which makes him a pirate. Here we go, fire. And the guns bounced off. Right. Close the bayonet range. Fix bayonets. And fire! Yes! Shove that in your pipe and smoke it, mate! You know, I really do wish these MiG-17s had a bayonet attachment. There's nothing like a good bit of the old cold steel. Yeah, especially since these cannon shells are as reliable as a French counterattack. You sort of need a good melee weapon. Then again, you could pull the 37mm gun out of its socket and then wield it as some kind of lethal bludgeoning mace. Yeah! All you'd have to do is wander out onto the wing and start harassing the enemy's bodywork. And then, when the enemy got home to land, he'd find some rather nasty dents in his fuselage. Yeah, fiendish. Or completely insane. I'm not sure. What do you think? Let me know. Am I sane of mind or have I parked my car down lunatic drive? Either way, it doesn't really matter. Good God, there goes the rudder. Well, I wasn't using it anyway, mate. No. Uh, now there's an attacker down here and uh, he's stalling out by the looks of it. Should be a free kill. You never know. Here we go. And... Aha! We've missed. Ah, uh, well, uh... Earlier, you might have witnessed that meteor blowing off my rudder, along with half my bloody tail section, but I assure you, your eyes deceived you. Now that you didn't see it happen, all the rudder damage business is just American propaganda. We have complete control of the situation. Anyway, so we need to land this tube, but the enemy will expect us to land at our airbase, so some dastardly thinking is required. Ha ha! Yes, we're going to land it on an aircraft carrier. Is there an idiot in any village that couldn't land a MiG on an aircraft carrier, I tell you? Yeah, is it moving? It's bloody moving! It, this is not the time to be on manoeuvres around the Bay of Biscay! You see, this is why, this is exactly why you don't use a Spanish aircraft carrier. You know how those bastards can drink? That, or the captain's on a siesta. I mean, where's he going? Uh, never mind, never mind, I'm an ace, war thunder pilot, I shall make corrections. Right, a bit to the right and glide it in. Here we go, glide it in. Glide it in. <coughs> and gently down, there we go. And slowly and calmly bring it to a controlled stop with the cannons, clear the deck and there we go. Absolutely brilliant. I impress myself sometimes with my magnificence. Whoops, there we go. It's on. That counts as on. First time as well. I really am an impressive human being. Yes, look at that. That's a that's a masterful piece of flying as well, that is. Your Galland and your Hartmans. Pfft. Nah. I'm 
seem to be playing with my stick quite vigorously, though. Um, yes. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, now ignore that fire. Ignore that. That wasn't me. You get some terrible pilots around here, you know? Absolutely awful. Oh dear. Well, um, yeah. Back to the hangar, I suppose. That was a really good game. And here we are, a beautiful 4-kill game in the MiG-17 with no crashes and one brilliant MiG-17 landing on a carrier. Yes, I sincerely hope you all enjoyed the show, I really, really do. I'd like to thank in particular a chap by the name of Fat Duck for their pledge, for their, for their pledge on Patreon. Oh god. Anyway, if you enjoyed the show, please dispatch a like via Carrier Pigeon and I will eat it. Cheerio!